Good evening. It's time once again to return to those exciting premiere days of radio as KRLD presents the thrilling adventures of the Green Hornet. The Green Hornet. <laughs> the biggest of all game, public enemies who try to destroy our America. matches wits with the underworld, risking his life that criminals and racketeers within the law may feel its weight by the sting of the Green Hornet. Ride with Britt Reed in the thrilling adventure, Escape for Revenge. The Green Hornet strikes again. We'll begin tonight's exciting story in just a moment. Well, Marcia, it's your decision. Do we buy the Centennial home or do we go to Europe this summer? I want to do both. Oh, come on. Be realistic. realistic. We can't afford it. Making money. Centennial Homes, the quality home builder, is proudly offering 99% financing on all completed homes in three master planned communities the Lakewood North community of Louisville, the Stone Ridge community of Arlington, and the Shenandoah Valley community of Duncanville. This unique financing program lets you buy a $30,000 Centennial home for $300 total down payment. Check Sunday's As Times Herald say, 40 days. I want to do both. Okay, you win. We'll sign the contract today, and tomorrow we apply for passports, okay? Okay. Centennial's 1% down payment plan is based on an 8.5 annual percentage conventional rate over 365 equal payments. Homes range in price from $21,000 to $32,000. For more information on the Stone Ridge community, ideally located in the Mid-Cities area, call Travis Heron at 461-3131. The 1% plan ends next Wednesday. If you're tired of salad dressings made from a package, Borden has an idea for you. A recipe for salad dressings made with tangy, fresh Borden buttermilk. It's just one of 20 great buttermilk recipes in the good old Borden buttermilk book. To get your book, pick up a carton of Borden buttermilk. The offer's on the side. 20 great recipes in one great book. A good old Borden buttermilk book. And now, the Green Hornet. A burly guard in the state prison walked along death row from the cell where Jack Ludlow, a hardened and unrelenting killer, had been waiting for the fatal march to the death house. The guard stopped before the door to the warden's office. Come in. What is it, guard? It's about Ludlow, warden. He's beginning to crack up. Wants to see you right away. Good. Maybe he's going to confess. I'll go talk to him right now. Uh, that won't do, warden. Ludlow's got less than half an hour left. Wants to talk to you in private. He's begging to be brought here to see you. Hmm. If he confesses, it'll be worth it. Take another guard with you. Bring Ludlow here to me. Yes, sir. I'll give him five minutes. Okay, keep your gun handy, Joe. Yeah. I'll unlock the cell door. Come on, Ludlow. And remember, you got two guns at your back. <laughs> I thought I could hold out about this. I just got to tell him. I can't go without without telling him. Yeah, them. I know, Ludlow. It's tough. Open the corridor door, Joe. Sure. Well, Ludlow, I guess you aren't as tough as you made out to be, are you? Most of them break when the time gets close. Guess you aren't any exception. Yeah. 
guess you're right. Here's the warden's office. It's about a knock. Come in. Here he is, warden. Well, let's have it. I'll give you five minutes, Ludlow. You two men can stand guard just outside the door there. Maybe one of us ought to stay here. Oh, he's unarmed. He couldn't get out except through that door. It's all right. Wait outside. Gee. Thanks, warden. Come on, Joe. Now, Ludlow, sit down if you want to. Tell me what's on your mind. Hey, I'm restless, warden. Being cooked up in that cell. Yes, I know. What does he want to tell me? Hey, I understand my old man came in to talk to you tonight, warden. Yes? Yes, he did, Ludlow. Felt sorry for him, seeing such a respectable old chap. And Well, your trouble broke him up quite a bit. Wanted to ask me about uh, certain arrangements. Yeah, I know. But get me buried. Uh, sure, that isn't uh, what you came to speak about, Ludlow. No. I came to see you about this. A gun? Where'd you get that? <laughs> that nice old man stuck it in this big fern over here, Warden. Just so it'd be handy. You won't get away with this, Ludlow. Get your hands up quick. Now, walk to that door and stand to one side of it. Get going. I'm keeping this gun right in your back. One slip means it goes off, see? I open the door a crack and tell those guys to go to the end of the corridor. Tell them you're walking back to the cell with me. Go on. All right. But I warn you, Do what I say. Guys. What up, Warden? Go to the end of the corridor and watch from there. I'm walking back with Ludlow. Okay, Warden. Go on, go All right. I saw it out beside me. When we get to the corridor leading to the main gate, we'll go that way. If we start a file, I'll tell him to go back. Now on your way. You think I'm going to let you get away with I this? I gotta die if I don't get out. You'll die too, Warden. I ain't kidding. Turn this way. Hey, Ward. Anything wrong? This gun is ready to go off, Warden. It's all right, guard. That's the stuff, Warden. We're going to the main gate. Keep it up and you won't be sorry. Oh! Oh, you, Warden. Tell him to open that gate. Open the gate, guard. There you are, Warden. I was... Hey, isn't that Ludlow with you? What's... Grab him, it's a break! Holy mackerel! Come on, Warden! Prison break! Come down! Warden, you got him! Hey, Warden, what happened? Hey, Warden, young publisher of the Daily Sentinel, was in the city room talking to Gunnigan, the city editor. Everything ready to roll, Gunnigan? Yes, yeah, see. Ludlow was slated to go to the chair at midnight. It's five after now. City room. Gunnigan, this is Mike Axford. Say, you, it's about time you phoned in. All the other papers will be on the street oh, before... Hold will you? I just gave a story to rewrite. Then I had them connect me with you. Where did you hear what happened? I ain't got the time to listen. I got... Ludlow ain't dead yet. Huh? Eh? What are they doing? Frying the guy? What do you mean? What happened? He got away. Made a jailbreak. Busted out of prison. Now do you get it? What? That's right. You can get the details of the rewrite test. See you later. So long. Hey, wait. That calls for an extra. What's happened? That was Axford. He haunted Ludlow, busted out of prison. Come on, Chief. We've got work to do. <laughs> The following afternoon, Britt Reed was going over letters with his secretary, Lenore Case, in his office. Answer this one in your own way, Miss Case. Yes, sir. Well, this is the last batch, so I'll get them all out today. Good. Mail was beginning to strike up. Eddie, Eddie! What brought you in, Axford? I came to tell you about that killer, Ludlow. 
Read? Maybe you forgot. But when Lerner was sentenced, he swore he'd get even with the prosecuting attorney and with the guy who was responsible for his capture. I do remember, actually. So who was responsible for his capture? The Green Hornet, that's who. Ludlow swore to get the lawyer Calvin York and the Green Hornet. Uh, he might get Calvin York, but the Hornet. Oh, no, that could never happen. Well, maybe not, but he sure has York upset. Sergeant Burke has a cop posted out there at York's place to protect him. I think the Hornet can take care of himself. And as for Calvin York, uh, as long as the police are guarding him, he'll be safe from Ludlow. Sure, that killer wouldn't dare show his face there. If they catch him again, he won't escape the chair. You can bet on that. Well, I'm going out to eat. Then I'll go to cops' headquarters. See you later. That night, in another part of the city... We see they don't come any smarter than Jack Ludlow, if I do say so myself. <laughs> My little plan worked out to a T. <laughs> Yeah, Jack, we should have put it over on him at the prison. <laughs> you know, I should have been acting the way I played the sad old man. Oh, and sure fell for it. Now you got a good chance to plant the gun for you. Okay, okay, you did your part easy. I'll pay you off soon as I get my mitts and some dough. I got a couple of things to pull, and then I'll have dough and be even with two skunks besides. You ain't thinking of going out tonight, are you, Jack? The whole city's sent for you. Stop <laughs> beefing, I can take care of myself. Get that mask for me? Yeah. It's right there in the table drawer in front of you. I'm going to need it tonight. There. How do I look, Wheezy? Well, if I ever seen the Green Hornet, I'd say you look like him. But I've never seen the Green Hornet, so... you never seen the Green Hornet, okay. But I have. This is a mask like his. Enough to pass for him anyway. People don't look too close when that guy comes around. What are you going to do? Look. You said there's a cop watching York's place, didn't you? Yeah. He was right on the porch when he went by. Big guy, too. Ah, cop's a cop to me. I can handle him. Me? I don't want to have to try. I'm taking this mask and calling on York tonight, Wheezy. What? Oh, you're crazy. That's what you think. But what about that cop? I'll get rid of him. I got something to square with York. If anybody's around when I get to him, he'll swear it was the Hornet who bumped him off. Then the hunt will turn to the Hornet, see? I don't get how you're going to do it, Jack. I told you to be sure there was a phone in my hideout, didn't I? Now that there is, I'm going to use it. You just listen, and you'll learn how I'm going to do it. York speaking. Just a moment and I'll... Right, uh, you can take a message for him. All right. Uh, what is the message, please? I, uh, I'm calling from police headquarters to tell you Ludlow's been caught. Oh, that's wonderful. That awful murderer. Hey, who are you calling? Oh, oh, yeah, Mrs. York. He sure is awful. Uh, by the way, tell the policeman we sent there to come back to headquarters right away, will you? Yes, of course I'll tell him. Uh, thank you for letting us know about the capture. It's a pleasure, ma'am. Goodbye. Goodbye. Who was that, Helen? Police headquarters. They called to say Ludlow's been captured. Oh, Calvin, I'm so relieved. Yes, I'm slightly relieved myself. Ludlow's a dangerous killer. Oh, they want the policeman who is out front to come to headquarters. Will you tell him, dear? Yes, I'll tell him right away. I'm glad we don't need him anymore. Now we'll have nothing to worry about. Turn in then, Calvin. After all, the strain has... What's the matter? Look. In the doorway. Hmm? The Queen Hornet. Right. I came to settle a score for a friend of mine, York. Put down that gun. Yeah, then. I'm using this gun 
on you, you No, no, I won't let you. Get away from me, you crazy dame. I won't, I won't let it hurt you. Get away, I said. Why, are you dirty? Okay, York, this is what I came to do. We'll continue our Green Hornet adventure in just a moment. Walk's appliance in Grand Prairie is resolved to do their part to conserve energy in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. The way they've set out to do this is to put a GE microwave oven in every kitchen in the Metroplex. The GE microwave oven is an innovative device, but not a luxury to own. It cooks your meals with one-fourth the time, one-fourth the energy. Waltz will give you 5,000 top value stamps just to try the GE microwave oven for one week in your home. The oven can be yours for as little as $10 a month or send it back and keep the stamps. Come to Waltz at 2336 East Main in Grand Prairie this Saturday, February the 16th and sample some goodies quick cooked by a GE microwave oven. You'll save time, money, and energy. You can make book on it. Three and a third books of top value stamps Compliments of Waltz Appliance in Grand Prairie. And now, back to the Green Hornet. state of excitement. Pete, where are you? Here in the dining room, Axford. Axford, sound excited. Pete, things are so happened. I just came from the center and they've already got extras out in the street. Well, calm down and tell us what's happened. Oh, uh, me poor feet. Uh, it's good to sit down. Uh, pour me a cup of coffee, Kato. A place all ready for you, but you're not come. Come on, Axford, what's the news? Oh, yeah. Well, you see, Reed, it was like this. I was at Cops headquarters a while ago. Sarge and me were having a quiet game of checkers and talking to me. Okay, Axford. Don't sit there all day. It's your move, so get busy. Now, hold your horses, Sarge. I got dough up in this game, and I ain't to be hurried. <laughs> yeah, only oh, good. Come on. Okay, I will. Uh, uh, there. <laughs> Caught you snapping that tight, Sarge. That I did. <laughs> hey, who do you think? Michael Axe for the chap, that's who. Don't ever get into a game of checkers with him, Moran. He's a crazy player. Hey, look, you could have made a move there, Sarge. Where? There, you see. Stop uh, Kibbits and Moran and go on about what you're doing. Yeah, Moran, you better... Hey! Huh? What do they do now? Moran, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be at York's place. Well, you phoned for me to come back. What? Man. Who said I phoned? Mr. York. That is, he said somebody phoned, said Ludlow was caught, and for me to... Holy call. cow! It's a trick! Get a squad car, quick, we got it! Police headquarters. Who? Yes, Mrs. York. What? The Green Hornet, you say? Are you sure? Sure, sure, try to calm yourself. We'll be right out. What is it, Sarge? York, he's been murdered by the Green Hornet. Tell the dispatchers to put out a citywide call. Get some of the boys. Get a squad car around front. Get busy, all of you. And poor Sarge was fit to be tied at the trick the harness pulled Reed. What if makes them think it was the Green Hornet, actually? Mrs. York saw him. That low down spout being shot her husband right before her eyes. That he did. I see. Well, I can't understand what motive they attached to the crime, actually. Well, it's as plain as an ordinary good face, Reed. That harness was in cahoots with Ludlow. But Ludlow swore vengeance against the Hornet, as I remember. Sure, but they're both a couple of killers. And birds of a feather run together, you know. They must have fixed things up between them. Certain Ludlow's mixed up in that murder somehow. Sure, that's what I said. Well, I'm getting along now. See you later. So long. Goodbye for a while, Axel. It's not good. Hornet get blamed for murder of Mr. York. I'll say it isn't. That must be Ludlow's way of getting even with a hornet and York at one and the same time. Well, what you do? I've been thinking. Ludlow got his revenge on York. Having just broken out of prison, the next thing he'll want to need is money for a getaway. 
And it stands to reason he'll use the Hornet disguise when he attempts to get that money. Well, that sounds reasonable. He'd throw more blame on Green Hornet. Yes. Moreover, he had help in making his escape from prison. That means another crook is working with him. What of that? Crooks like that have no sense of honor. They'll do anything for money. I'm going to call the Sentinel. Have Gunnigan run a box on the front page featuring the large reward we offer for the capture of the Hornet. It might give somebody an idea. Will you wait here to see if it brings results? No. After phoning the Sentinel, we'll take the Black Beauty and the masks and drive into the business section of town. If a never comes in, we'll catch it over the shortwave radio and the police broadcast it. Then the Green Hornet will be in on the kill. Now for some action. Rick Reed put through his phone call to the Sentinel. Then, stepping through a secret panel in the bedroom, he and Cato went along a narrow passageway built within the walls of the apartment itself. This passage led to an adjoining building, which fronted on a dark side street. Though supposedly abandoned, this building served as the hiding place for the sleek, super-powered Black Beauty, streamlined car of the Green Hornet. Vic Reed pressed a button. The great car roared into life. A section of the wall in front raised automatically, then closed as the gleaming Black Beauty sped into the darkness. Jack? You're an accessory to the whole thing. That means who I bumped off, you bumped off. That's the way the cops look at it. So when I scram out of this burg, you have to go along. Or else something may happen. Oh, now, wait a minute, Jack. Why can't I just stay here? Stay staying, see? And we'll get some dough tonight. With me wearing a hornet mask. For the love of Mike, has some sense. With flat feet all over the place, why do you have to... Because we have to. That enough? Look, Weezy, got it all figured out. That little movie joint we went to last night. The manager's office is right inside the door off the lobby. I noticed it especially. But they don't leave any of the door there after they close up. We'll grab it before they close up. I saw the manager take a bag of dough in there last night about 11. But he'll see you. He'll be a witness in this. I ain't gonna bump him off. I want a witness. (laughs) He'll say the hornet stole the dough. Look there, Weezy, see that headline? Kelvin York shot by Green Hornet. <laughs> I sure got away with it. Yeah. Yeah, you did. What are you staring at? See something else? No, oh, nothing interesting. Uh, you see, you're going to pull the hole up at 11 o'clock? Right. You can sit in the car around the corner. We'll get that dough and then blow the town before morning. Okay. This you say, Jack. <coughs> I'm going down for some smokes. Want anything? No. Set it up. We'll leave in five minutes. Okay. I'll be right back. Watch yourself, Weezy. Yeah, I will. Let me see you. Hey. Yeah. I bump off. You bump off, he says. I got to get from under on this deal. That reward for the horn will do it. I'll call the cops. Tell them about the movie hold up. They catch Jack Ludlow. Me. I get out from under with a lot of dough for doing it. Not long after Wheezy left the hideout, the long black car of the dreaded Green Hornet slid in among the shadows of the back street, not far from a small movie theater. We have radio set for police calls, Mr. Britt, but they're not anything come over we hoped for. I'm still hoping, Cato. After all, I don't know. Well, somebody come on radio now. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Green Hornet holding up neighborhoods the other at 10th and Water Streets. 
The other hold up by Green Hornet at 10th and Water Street. That is all. It worked, Cato. I want to show down with Ludlow. We've got to get there before the police. Stop on it. This is a stick-up. Are you... You're the Green Hornet. What do you think? Put all that dough bag in that bag and hand it over. Hurry. I... Uh, oh, all right. Well, only don't shoot. Get it in the bag now. Yeah, yes. Yes, sir. Be sure you don't hold any out on me either. No, no, sir. It's all there. Good. <laughs> Give me it. Ah. Uh, lie down on the floor with your face to the wall. If I hear one peep out of you, I'll let you have it. Understand? Yes. Then get down like I said. No, Pals in the back seat sleeping. I've been waiting for this meeting. You, that sneaking hornet, huh? You'll be sorry you mixed up in my affairs. Says you. Help, you fool. Help. Don't be caught. The council comes. Right, and they'll find you, killer. I'll blow your brains out, you. Not yet, you won't. Close, but not close enough. Take this. And this. And this one for wearing a mask like mine. Oh, wait. You can have the door. I'll give you the I'm giving you this. Oh. Believe you quick. Get going, kiddo. We haven't a moment to lose. The police will know what to do with that killer when they find him. Give it the gas, kiddo. Kim Chief. He phoned in here and said that they caught the harlot. I get everything set up and what happened. Well, what? He phones back that it isn't the harlot at all. It was Ludlow posing as the harlot. Well, that's big news in itself, Gunnigan. Sure it is, Reed. That's what I tried to tell him. But he saw it because he had a wee bit of extra work. That's all. A wee bit. Oh, I give up. What's the real news, actually? Reed, the cops got a tip that the harlot was holding up a movie. When they got there, they found Ludlow wearing a mask and laid out flat in the bottom of the front of a car, if you know what I mean. Well, uh... I guess so. I thought. Oh, it'll take him all night, Chief. They got Ludlow. They got his crony, a little mutt named Wheezy, who squealed the high heavens about everything. Sure. Wheezy said Ludlow posed as a harlot to kill York. And then and when he... the cops got to the scene of the holdup, a crowd of people swore that they saw two green harlots fighting in a car. Two? Sure. The real harlot was fighting Ludlow. Uh, I guess even the green harlot couldn't stand that low down heel Ludlow. I know. I despise that killer. <laughs> Not said it to ten. If you despise him, it stands to reason the green harlot does too, Reed. What? What do you mean? <laughs> Look at him, Gunnigan. <laughs> he takes me serious. <laughs> he does know a bit of sarcastic when he hears it. <laughs> sarcastic, that's <laughs> Yeah. Did you ever hear the likes of that before, Chief? <laughs> sarcastic. <laughs> Can I throw the road on? And how? <laughs> KRLD, you're reliving the exciting days of early radio. Tonight's broadcast of The Green Hornet will continue following this brief pause. Honestly, I can't say I don't care how I look. I do. But I don't want to spend all my time on skin care and makeup. I'm just too busy for that. So I use OJ's Beauty Lotion, a crystal clear lotion that's easy to use and very effective. Just a little OJ's on a cotton pad gets all the dirt and makeup other cleansers often miss. So my skin looks as clean as it feels. 
I care how I look. OJ's Beauty Lotion cares for my skin. These popular radio dramas, created by George W. Trendle, are a copyrighted feature of The Green Hornet, Incorporated. All characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. And that's tonight's KRLD presentation of The Green Hornet. Be listening again one week from tonight at the same time for the next thrilling chapter in the life of Britt Reed and his constant companion Cato on The Green Hornet. Tomorrow night, KRLD invites you to relive again the days of yesteryear when the Lone Ranger rides again. That's tomorrow night at the same time on KRLD. The latest American Research Bureau survey reports KRLD Dallas continues to have more audience than any other Dallas radio station.